Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu 14.04 server uh, using VMware Fusion. Now this process should work almost identically the same except for the VMware Fusion specifics on VirtualBox and on Parallels. What we'll do is we'll select our disk image and this is the disk image I downloaded today from Ubuntu.com which is 14. 04.2 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bypass the VMware Fusion easy install because I want to show you the actual Ubuntu customized install so I'm going to just unselect that continue and then what I'll do is we'll customize uh, we will customize some of the settings here so we'll just hit customize we have to save it as a name and save it it's fine and then we're going to edit the processor memory. So I'll just give it some more RAM. Now, typically on a production server, I would give it a lot more resources. But for this one, we just want to be a little quicker. I'm not sure if the actual RAM or CPU is really going to matter since it's a guest on uh, a MacBook Pro, but we'll see. After that, we'll start it. And it should prompt us with a couple of things. So I'm just going to select English here. And then install. And then it's got us uh, prompting for English, I'm sorry, the language selection again. So we'll go ahead and hit English and United States is our location. And I don't want it to detect the keyboard layout specifically because I'm on a Mac and it's a uh, Linux guest, so I just want to get the standard one there. So I'm going to check US, US, and then it should start prompting me. Okay, so you'll notice that we've already lost our mouse here. It's not on the screen, you know, moving around. In the top right hand corner it says, uh, to release your mouse, press Control Command. So if I do that, I'll get it back. And this is because the installation process doesn't have a mouse. And in fact, actually, when we get to the terminal and console later on, it doesn't have a mouse either. So it just steals the mouse. Like that. Let's give it a host name. And we'll set our username. Keep the username the same for my user account. We'll give it a password. Verify the password. And I'm not going to encrypt my home directory this time around because I want to keep it simple. In fact, a lot of the times I won't encrypt the guest because when you're running on ESXi or something like that and you encrypt the guest itself, if you do a remote reboot, what will happen is the guest will then prompt you to enter in the password to unlock it. Unlock it. So, you know, it needs to unlock the encryption. And what will happen is if you reboot it, it'll just hang there until you go into the vSphere console and look at the guest specifically and then enter the password. So if you're doing any remote work, that kind of blows you out of the water in some respect. So, yep, we want New York, which is fine. And we'll go ahead and set up the LVM. Um, this is the option I was just referring to here. Was in if you encrypt it, uh, that'll require you to put in a password to unencrypt the disk and boot up the guest. So you want to write these changes? Yes, you want to write them. Uh, 20 gigs is fine for this. And then we'll just confirm. Yes, we want to write these changes to disk. And what I'll do is uh, I'll cut out some of this progress bar parts of the installation. It'll take a little bit of time, and we'll only focus on the actual menus. So we'll leave proxy server blank because we don't have a proxy for this particular installation. Okay. 
So we're going to set this to install security updates automatically. Now, depending on what kind of system you're installing, like a production system, I would choose no, because if it's a production system, I'm going to want to manage how and when the updates go in. I'm going to look for a change window or specific maintenance window where I'm going to install them. I also want to manage my updates through the proper, you know, migration process in our system. So I'm going to want to install those updates initially on our test systems and make sure they work fine. And then I'm going to install them on our QA systems and make sure they want to find, work fine. And then I'm going to, at the very end, hit the production systems. And that'll ensure we don't have some sort of production outage because we installed something, you know, that didn't really work. Uh, or it didn't really work with our systems quite right, you know, some sort of unforeseen error. Now, that doesn't eliminate that possibility entirely, but following that, you know, propagation process will help minimize the risk of you having something unforeseen. But that's with the assumption that your test QA and prod systems all have identical configurations and are running proper applications and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and select to install automatically for this because I'm going to install uh, Nginx server later on. It's a demo. I'm just going to leave it as open SSH server so we can remote into it later. And I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to leave all the other options unchecked. We might install Postgres database later also, but we'll do that manually through the package manager. Okay. If we want to install a grub bootloader on the master boot record, yes, we want to do that. Installation is complete. Uh, remove the installation media. Uh, VMware Fusion will handle that for us. Let's just hit continue. Okay, we can see it booting up for the first time now. And we're at the login prompt. So I'll use the username and password I set during the installation process. And we should be good. So the first thing I like to do when I install a lot of these things is just get the packages up, uh, packages updated. So what I'll do is just do sudo apt-get update. And what I'm referring to are, are these 50 packages right here, the 30 right here. They can be updated, and we got 33 security updates. So go ahead and update. And what this will do, we'll update the versions and the repositories. So it's not actually upgrading the, the packages, it's just going out the repositories and making sure we have all the updated versions for them. This will upgrade them. So I'm going to go sudo apt get oops, and type upgrade. And it will prompt us at the bottom there if we want to install all this stuff. It's showing us what we're just going to install. So it starts at App port find ID nine dash host. Hit Y. Okay, so now that I've updated all these packages, what we'll do is make sure we have SSH access into the box. So if I do ifconfig minus A, that should show us our network card configuration and also our IP address. So if we look at there, it says here 192.168.199.128, which is our IP address for the box. So if I come over here to my terminal, which is my machine, I should be able to SSH into it. So 192.168.199.128. And it looks like I reused that uh, IP address, and it has a different token in there for it. So that's OK. 
So let's go ssh and we'll go into known hosts. We'll look at them all down here. So we'll delete that last one there. So right quit. And then what we can do is we can SSH back into it. So now, okay. So we get the first mentions there because I had done an installation before with a similar box and has the same name as the sage keys, but it's detecting that I re-imaged that box pretty much or created a new one. So what we'll do is now that we are SSHing into it for the first time, we'll go ahead and hit yes and that'll add this system and uh, SSL keys into our known host file. That's why we had to remove it because we had to add a previous one onto the same IP address and MAC ID before. So I go ahead and put my password in and we're logged into the box now. So it still says 50 packages and 33. So what we'll do is we'll reboot it. Not like that, I won't. And that'll cause it to go down. Won't take very long for it to come back up. Okay, so in this terminal over here, even though it's running, I don't actually need to log into it. I can log into it from here, which is very convenient because I prefer this terminal over the actual console from being my fusion. So we'll just go back into it, put our password back in. And we've updated. It looks like we've got, still got seven packages that have updates to do, so we could run that process again. We're doing the sudo apt get update and sudo apt uh, get uh, upgrade and get those last few remaining ones. There's probably a dependency issue in there anyway. But for now, we'll stop here. And next time, we'll work on getting the web server installed, and maybe we'll look into some potential configurations for Nginx.